Okay, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or early morning, depending on where in the world you're joining us from. Uh, thanks to everyone for signing up for this uh, event today. We've got people coming in from all across the world. We've got students uh, from Asia, from this, the Americas. We've got uh, careers counsellors from schools in the Middle East. And they're all here to find out about this brand new, exciting programme at Brunel University in London, which is one of a very unique number of medical programmes in the UK, which at the moment is open specifically for international students. And I think during the presentation, we'll have the opportunity to talk about some of the statistics from last year and what we're seeing already this year, which will kind of reinforce the point that studying at medicine at Brunel, if you're an international student, is definitely something which should be on your agenda. Without any further ado, I want to introduce uh, Chris Holloway from Brunel University, who I've known for quite a number of years now, who's been instrumental on bringing this programme uh, to where we are today. Uh, already applications are significantly above where we expected, but the good news is for Brunel and for your students, uh, and for you students, and if you're a college counsellor for your students, that uh, applications are still open and later on in the presentation we'll talk about how you can make applications directly to Brunel through Medical Doorway. So Chris, I understand has got a presentation for us. Now I do know a number of other people are going to drop into the presentation as we go through the, through the, uh, through the webinar. But I'm going to let Chris uh, introduce himself and I'm going to let him get on with this presentation, which is going to last around about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, following the presentation or even during the presentation, if you've got any questions, my advice is go down to the Q&A feature on Zoom, add those questions in there, and then what we'll do, because not all the people can see the questions, what we'll do is we'll read each question out as we go uh, to the end of the presentation so everyone can listen to the uh, questions and then we can answer them uh, so everyone can hear the, uh, the answer to those questions and get the most from this presentation. This is being recorded, so for those of you that perhaps want to look this again, you can check on our YouTube channel later on today and take a good look at it there as well. But Chris, I want to hand over to you because we've got a good group of people from all across the world joining us. So uh, tell us all we need to know about uh, the medical programme at Brunel. Brilliant. Um, thanks, Ben. Thanks for that um, very warm welcome. Um, first of all, um, sorry, Ben, can you see my screen that I'm sharing now with the first slide? Brilliant. Good. Well, so, yeah. Welcome um, to a, yeah, hopefully a short and engaging talk on Brunel Medical School, but I'm also going to speak sort of more broadly um, about, you know, the benefits of studying medicine in the UK, you know, not, not just in London uh, and at Brunel. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm, I understand you've uh, coming from all over the world, which is very exciting indeed. So yeah, I'm Chris and I've worked at various medical schools now in London, um, including King's College and also Queen Mary University of London now um, happily at uh, Brunel. So over the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to cover pretty much the following, not necessarily in this order, um, but a little bit about why, you know, coming to the UK is very popular for medicine. We'll, of course, cover the MBBS information, we'll do fees, scholarships, stick around for interview hints and tips, because again, I'm going to be speaking broadly about all your interviews you'll be attending and hopefully being invited to, not just Brunel's. We'll cover how to apply, um, entry requirements. I won't go into too much detail because you can read that on the website for yourself, but we will brush past that. Um, but also I think it's important for you to know what makes Brunel Medical School, um, you know, an exciting uh, place for you to think about studying. And as Ben said, we can do questions uh, at the end. If you have any burning questions, um, I'm sure we can uh, interrupt the, my talk and, and do some then. Um, just to note, the, uh, this is a brand new medical school, it's a new uh, MBBS course, and it is for exclusively for international students for next September. We will look at introducing the um, course for home students, so that's the UK students, but for now it is for international students only. The benefits of that will become obvious to you uh, as we go through the talk. Okay, so get your thinking caps on. Um, there's going to be a little bit of engagement now. Um, so to be a successful doctor uh, in the UK, yes, but in anywhere in the world, you need important qualities. And here are some of them. You need to be, be compassionate. You need to be committed, competent, smart, respectful, um, honest, of course, resilient. You know, it's a tricky course. It's a tricky career and, you know, and, and organised. So in the Q&A, what I'd like you to do is put what, which quality do you think is the most important? There may be more than one. 
So what qualities are the most important um, to become a doctor? Um, you know, there's no wrong answer. Don't be shy. Just type them in the Q&A or the chat and we can have a look. The chat feature is open to everyone, guys. So thank you, Anna, for the first one. And oh, this is we're getting a, yeah, yeah, we're getting I've a few uh, different uh, different answers here. So we've got uh, we've got compassionate from Anna, dedication from Shreya. Again, compassionate from another Anna, and then we've got uh, committed, respectful, and resilient from Joanna. So this is good, Chris. We're getting a, a good diversity of answers from these uh, from these various yeah. suggestions. Thank here. you very much. Um, okay, good. So. I'm just going to close my q and if I can. Yeah, so the answer is, well, okay, it's a bit of a trick question. The answer is all of them. Um, so you're all correct, which is great. Um, so, you know, this may sound a little bit harsh now, but, you know, if you think you're missing one of these qualities, uh, you know, then you may struggle on the course. Um, you know, certainly as a doctor, you will. So something for you to think about, but also have a think about these qualities in preparation for your interviews, because no doubt, you know, more than one or two of these will come out, come out. So have a think about some examples about how you can um, articulate how you are um, and you can express these qualities for yourself. That'd be great. OK, so why come all this way to the UK uh, or London to study medicine? There are a number of reasons uh, and we're going to go through them now. So. Firstly, um, in the UK, it's for the quality, heritage and tradition related to the field of medicine. Uh, we have a deep history of educating doctors. Um, it's fair to say we have some of the oldest and best medical schools in the world, you know, Imperial, Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, to name but a few. Um, and we're regulated by the GMC, which is the General Medical Council, uh, which is essentially is the gold standard in quality assurance of medical education and ensures that all medical school programs are high quality, it doesn't matter where you go, um, which is um, you know, great for students coming over to the UK. Um, for those of you, some of you will want to go home after the degree, many of you will want to stay in the UK. Um, if you do so, there are many professional opportunities after graduating. I think we now have well over 70 different specialities for you to consider. And lastly, in the UK, you know, it's not just about the theory and the science you learn. We have a fantastic learning philosophy. Uh, you know, we focus on teamwork, empathy and professionalism uh, here in the UK. But then also, you know, your clinical placements will be within the infamous NHS, the National Health Service, um, which uh, doctors and students strive to be a part of. Um, it's one of the largest, largest publicly health uh, system, publicly funded health systems in the world. And it's... Um, good for the CV, let's say, and good for your experience. Okay, just a couple of slides on the actual university. Uh, the talk's focused on medical school, but you know you are coming to the university as well. So um, if you've done some research, then great already. As a reminder, uh, it's a pretty well established university going back to 1966. May, I'd say a lot of the students around the world have probably heard of it for its technology and engineering, uh, but we do have a wide range of health programs as well. I would say we're medium to large size with over 4,000, I think even up to 5,000 international students on campus. Um, and it is a truly international campus. We have over 150 different nationalities represented, uh, which we, we our students love. Um, and we have a great, great reputation at Brunel for looking after the international students. Uh, for that reason, we are ranked 24th in the world for our international outlook, according to the latest um, world university rankings. We've got great sports facilities. Um, Usain Bolt, along with the Jamaican team, chose our facilities to train in preparation for London Olympics. Um, but I think more importantly, very rare for a London campus. We're all in one place, sort of American style uh, campus, all in one site, accommodation, teaching, learning, um, you know, play games, etc. But I think what our students love most, which I hear probably on a daily basis, is our um, location. Um, so as you can see, um, the familiar London tube map, we are very well connected to central London. You can be at, in Baker Street in about 40 minutes or less. And we're in a little town called Uxbridge there, which is on the Met Metropolitan Underground Line and the Piccadilly Line. So you've got two tube lines to, uh, to choose from. And of course, we're close to Heathrow Airport, uh, 20 minutes. Actually, I did it 15 minute drive this morning with no traffic, um, so handy for you know, parent visits, 
possibly long weekend getaways, half-term visits to Europe, etc. So it's nice to have Heathrow um, Airport on the doorstep. This is the Brunel campus, uh, looking quite green last year in the summer sun. The medical school is there on the right, the green arrow. Um, it's called Quad North Building. It's in the heart of the campus. Um, it's being refurbished right now, um, ready for your arrival in 2022. And just around the corner, in the bottom left-hand corner, is Hillingdon Hospital, uh, which is our key partner hospital. And that's where you'll be doing a lot of your uh, training, especially in the first instance in the first year. Um, and again, now speaking more broadly, um, when you're looking at medical schools, always take note and ask, you know, ask the admissions team, where is the teaching hospital, the main one? Is it on campus? Is it 10 miles away? Because you don't want a campus uh, with a, a hospital that's quite far away. That would be quite inconvenient for you. So jumping on to the MBBS course itself. Um, so as Ben said, we are a brand new medical school. We're very excited about that. Application is for September 2022, uh, next year. Um, yes, we're new, um, but the school, but the college in which the school sits in is certainly not. It's very well established, and we are part of the College of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences. So we also offer um, a wide range of courses like biomedical sciences, life sciences, physiotherapy, that are really uh, popular um, for international students. Uh, so the MBBS, it's a Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, um, sometimes known as a PMQ or Primary Medical Qualification. It's recognised um, broadly around the world. Um, but please note, um, I would say about 60 to 70 percent of MBBS degrees in the UK are not recognised in Singapore. Uh, that's for a number of reasons, and we won't go into that now, but just just so you're aware, if you are Singaporean and you want to get back to Singapore to practice medicine, just ask that question at the, at the university and they'll be able to help. Um, MBBS is five years duration. Sometimes uh, medical school programmes are six, ours is five. Um, we do offer medicine scholarships, which we'll cover later, um, and application is open at the moment, and we'll cover that also in about two or three minutes. So at Brunel Medical School, we have a very strong um, and growing academic faculty made, of, made up of academics and professors from all, more, all over the world. Um, here's a small sample. Um, I'm not going to go through them all because that will take ages, but um, just for your interest, our Dean, Professor Lobeer in the top right hand corner, she joined us uh, last year um, and she brings a depth of experience from Imperial London and also from a medical school in Singapore, actually. And she's a gynaecologist uh, by trade as well as uh, Dean. So how to apply? Um, so for Bruno Medical School, you can apply through UCAS. Um, application opened on the 7th of September. Um, it did close on the 15th of October. However, however, we have extended our UCAS deadline. So we are still open for UCAS if you do want to um, apply through UCAS. Um, I would imagine most other medical schools are now closed in the UK, that is. Um, but I think a more popular option for international students, um, if you pass the UCAS deadline, is to apply directly to Brunel. Um, and our application has opened, it is still open, and will remain open until all our places have been filled. Um, but we, we do recommend you do apply um, soon, um, just so you get a chance of being interviewed um, in our first batch of interview, interviews, which is December. Um, Failing that, you will be invited to interview in January, February, March um, next year. And the third option, actually, I should say, is um, you can uh, apply through one of our um, approved and recommended agents, a medical doorway here. Uh, I'm sure can uh, help you with that when you decide to apply. So I think it's really important for any international student to know when they apply for a medical school program, how many international seats are available? Because you don't want to be applying to four medical schools in UCAS that only offer you know, 10 places. So that's going to really limit your chances. So always ask, and admissions will be pleased to help, you know, how many places do you offer? Uh, for us, we offer between 60 and 70 places for next year, which is high. It's actually the second highest uh, in the UK. So which is great news for you. It means you have a good chance of getting in. Um, so, just for your information, um, most medical schools are capped by the government and not only offer 7.5% of their seats for overseas students. So the bar on the right is Brunel Medical School, 
because we at the moment we're not recruiting home students um, it's also the funding um, we do have more seats available for international students uh, for next year okay on to the serious stuff tuition fee scholarships um, for a decent medicine education in the UK, you're looking around about 40 to 45, sometimes even 50,000 pounds a year. Um, ours is 41,200 with a small increment each year over the five years. Um, this doesn't include student accommodation and living expenses, however. And we do have a number of scholarships available and they're worth 30,000 pounds each. We do have a dedicated scholarship webpage you may have seen already with all the finer detail. Um, but essentially, the £30,000 is spread over the five years and they are awarded on merits and they're essentially awarded on your performance when you come for your MMI, your interviews. So, you know, when you come for interview, yes, you're being scored first and foremost for your offer of entry. But as a, as a sidebar, you will also be scored um, for the scholarships and the top candidates will be shortlisted. Um, and invited in for another interview, um, but this will be aimed at purely for scholarship candidates, um, where you'll be asked to do a short presentation online, so nothing too much to, to worry about just yet, and nothing to worry about at all just yet, because first of all, you need to receive an offer from us next year before you can even think about starting, um, start thinking about the scholarship. But uh, I think the website will explain it probably a lot clearer than I have, um, so please go and visit the page. So all our entry requirements, we have a lot of them, um, are on the web page. But um, in summary, we accept a wide range of qualifications. Um, you know, the, the main ones, A-levels, um, we ask for AAB minimum, and we ask for chemistry or biology. A lot of me medical schools will only ask for, you need chemistry. Um, you can come to us with biology. Uh, you will need a second science, which can be physics. Um, we actually consider maths as a second science. So you could come in with biology and maths and another subject. And then a third subject, which can be anything but not general studies. AAB maps to 33 points for IB. And we ask for high level six, high level five in chemistry, again, or biology. And then the second science, which could be maths. Now, we do offer, I'm not going to go through them all because there's loads, um, but we do offer... Um, we do accept a wide range of international qualifications and that's, you know, high school secondary quals from around the world. Um, I've, I've just put there some Indian examples, but, you know, we, we also have uh, Hong Kong, um, Canada, um, US, et cetera. So please do have a look on the website and hopefully yours will be, will be listed. If you do not see your qualification listed, please email us in and I'll, um, we'll check and to see whether we accept the qualification. The good news is we do accept graduates, which is uh, unusual for medical schools, unless you're applying for a very competitive graduate entry program. Uh, but so you can come to us with a, a if you've already done a degree in medicine, uh, sorry, a degree in a, in a health subject or a science subject like biomedical sciences, pharmacology or neuroscience, for example, and you need to score a 2.1 minimum or equivalent. Um, you can actually do a master's, I, I believe, in something that's health related as well and, and apply. So please do look at that. So importantly for this year, um, you probably would have heard of UCAT or the BMAT, which are the, uh, the nasty sort of clinical aptitude tests uh, that medical schools um, often ask you to do. So at Brunel, this is our launch year. We do not require you to sit the UCAT or the BMAT for this year. Um, however, Please note, if you are thinking of future years, uh, i.e. 2023-24 onwards, we will be asking you to sit UCAT. But for, the, for our launch year for next year, there's no need for you to um, send in your score. And if you do send in, in your score, um, you, you won't be at an advantage. We won't look at it. Um, so it just there's, there's no point in you doing that. Uh, English language requirements, um, pretty typical for medical schools. IELTS 6, IELTS 7, sorry. Uh, in all elements um, or equivalent, we expect we um, accept a wide range of other English language tests. Now, if you've done um, 
GCC English language or literature and you've scored a good grade, like C or above, uh, you won't need that IELTS. Or if you've done IB English language, English literature at high level, um, also you won't need to submit your IELTS. Now, age is important. Um, and again, something worth um, asking any admissions team at any medical school, um, because there's no point wasting an application and all that time. And if, if you can't, if, you know, if you've missed, missed the cut of the age. So at Brunel, we ask you to be 18 by the 26th of September. Um, we've put normally there because there is a bit of leeway. Um, so, you know, if you are, you know, getting into, um, you know, five days here, here and there, you know, please apply anyway and we'll see what we can do. But it's this date because you'll be in contact with patients very early on in the in the in your very first term. And, and by law, you do need to be 18. So it's quite an important uh, point of the application for you to be aware of. Okay, interviews. So we're gonna spend a bit of time on this now, um, how to prepare some hints and tips because it is core to the application process. And unfortunately you can't duck it or avoid um, an interview uh, pretty much for every medical school in the UK, if not around the world any, anymore. So you need to be well prepared. You need to um, have a think about what's coming up. So ours takes the format of the MMI, which is the multi mini interview. Uh, I'm sure you all heard of by now if you're serious about studying medicine in the UK. If you haven't, fine, um, might still be early days. Um, it's essentially an interview where you visit different stations to answer different questions under time conditions. So you will have two minutes to read a scenario just on your own. Um, then you will meet an academic and you will have five minutes to answer the question. Um, when the five minutes is up, a little bell will ring um, and then you'll move on to the next station to answer a different question. And you do this six times until you've completed the cycle. Um, you know, it's not easy. Uh, as I said, it's you may be out of your comfort zone and you will need to prepare, uh, but it's the same for everyone. Um, now, MMIs traditionally take place on a university campus, um, but due to the pandemic, uh, we were well, certainly at Brunel, we invite students online, actually it's by Zoom, um, for their their VMMI, their virtual multi mini interview. It's the same setup, same questions, no different, just online. Um, so, you know, you're gonna be in different Zoom virtual breakout rooms actually with a different academic and a, and a professor. So a couple of tips from me, because I've been doing these um, sort of the VMMIs for years now, I would uh, practice doing them online with a friend. I know you've all got Zoom, you can record uh, an interview, have some fun with it. Um, review it, um, try again. Um, you know, it's important to feel comfortable talking to a screen, you know, in an interview setup. It's quite strange. I find it quite strange talking to you now on, on my laptop. Um, so you're going to find it probably strange in interview format. But if you can be ready for that with a lot of practice, then that's one less thing to think about. Um, and also, yeah, wear exactly what you'd wear to a face to face interview, even down to your shoes. Um, you want to look and feel the parts and remember you'll be on camera um, all the time. So medical schools in the UK, um, they try and squeeze in as many themes and topics as they can into the different six stations. Um, and there's a lot of them. This isn't an exhausted list by any means, but it's, you know, they're the key, key ones there. Um, so it's important that you can prepare for all of these areas. Um, and how, you know, and then you can have a think about, you know, how uh, a medical school might ask the question. You only need to Google MMI, most popular questions, to have a look for yourself. So, you know, there's no secrets. Um, so, you know, do you do all the research that you can? Um, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these because it's a presentation itself, but I might put out a few here. So, current affairs in the media, you know, should be quite obvious in light of everything that's going on at the moment in the world. Think about how COVID-19 could crop up. Um, yeah, of course, you know, as a, as a doctor, if you're in a busy ward, you need to be able to interpret data accurately and quickly. So and that's certainly something you can have a practice. Um, I mean, I say this to all students, um, you know, and it's not just interviews, but it's for your own purpose. You know, know exactly why you want to become a doctor and know how to answer this confidently and articulately. 
Uh, you know, the answer is not because my parents are doctors, they think it's a good idea. It sounds strange, but, you know, we, we do hear that pretty much every year and it's, uh, it's certainly a red flag for us. So do have to think about that. You know, think about your own motivations for becoming a doctor, your own skills, patient care, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, even though it's virtual, there could be role playing. Um, so, you know, those who have done drama uh, at school, so time to bring out the drama skills. Um, typically, you might be asked um, as a doctor to break some bad news to a patient. Um, sounds easy. It, it, it might not be. It may be for you, but obviously this is testing communication skills and your empathy skills. And then finally, you know, I've mentioned this already before, but know a little bit about the NHS. What's interesting about it is challenges. Um, you know, you're going to be working in the NHS for five years. Um, so, you know, if you can weave that into one of your answers, um, you know, that's, uh, that's good. OK, so. We know you are looking at a lot of medical schools, um, not just in the UK, probably around the world. So I'm just going to sort of finish off now on the last sort of and a third of the talk uh, to talk about Bruno Medical School and what's, what makes us, you know, unique and stand out. So, I mean, first and foremost, um, we are a brand new medical school, so we'll have brand new facilities, um, which will be over in the Quad North building, uh, as I said, in the heart of the campus. There'll be two simulated hospital wards, the anatomy centre, clinical skills centre, multimedia rooms, consultation rooms, um, social spaces and breakout zones. But also you'll have your um, dedicated student support office, which is exclusively for international medicine students. Um, so, you know, you can have all the support you need. And when we'll touch on that uh, in a couple of minutes, we do have a virtual tour, which will be live actually on our website. Um, next week so keep an eye out for that and you can have a look around the building for yourself it's actually quite cool so we are one of the few medical schools in the world um, to use team-based learning as our main method of teaching otherwise known as tbl you've probably heard of pbl you've read enough prospectuses uh, now probably and read enough websites to see pbl crop up all the time so we tbl is a, an alternative to pbl and it's an alternative to lectures and seminars so at brunel uh, medical school we don't have any lectures uh, some of you will be pleased to hear so there'll be no more falling asleep in the back of class um, you know the clues in the name teams you're going to be working in teams for the best part of the first two years and it's an exciting and engaging way to learn with very high levels of um, information retention. Uh, and there's, there's going to be six of you, uh, students from all over the world, um, facilitated by our clinicians and academics. It's a very modern way of teaching, uh, also quite popular in uh, Singapore and in some areas of the US. So unlike a lot of medical schools, um, that you're going to be learning about the human body from real life human bodies. Um, so you're going to be, we call them plastinated specimens. So they're, they're real human bodies, um, preserved and soaked in acetone. Um, I'm not sure how old they are, but some are quite old. Um, I think the best way to explain it, aside from this picture here, is um, if you've ever been to a body world exhibition, it's in any major city in the world, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, really exciting stuff to be learning anatomy um, on and with. So, as I said uh, at the beginning, at Brunel, we have a, an outstanding student support service. Um, you know, you've got your own office, you've got your own personal coach, um, sorry, your own student support office. Um, you know, we, cl we collect you from the airport from your first day from Heathrow, and then we look after you all the way through to graduation. Um, you know, and you'll have all the support you need in your clinical placements, um, as well as on campus, of course. As a brand new medical school, um, we have the luxury of having state-of-the-art digital tech to support your learning. Uh, you'll be learning about uh, VR uh, and augmented reality. And much of your preparation study will be done online um, using your own personal devices. <clears throat> now, why is this important? Um, you know, in the event of any further COVID-19 disruptions, uh, we'll be well prepared to continue with our teaching at a very high standard 
online from the comfort of your own home in your home countries. So that's maybe another question you might want to consider asking admissions teams uh, when you're applying to the medical school. You know, what is the curriculum digital? What happens uh, you know, if there's any further lockdowns? How, how, how will we continue at a very high standard of, uh, of learning and teaching? <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Clinical placements, again, core to any um, you know MBBS program. Um, you're going to be doing clinical placements, for, you know, on every year for the five years. As I said, uh, the most exciting element I think of the course is that you're going to be meeting patients from the very first term. Uh, pretty much from October, November uh, next year. Um, sounds scary, maybe it is, but you know, you'll know you be certainly prepared as much beforehand as possible in our simulated wards, and simulated patients. Um, the clinical placements are guaranteed and are located in hospitals in this, and, and, and other um, clinical facilities in the surrounding area of Greater London, where we are in West London, um, and the southeast of England. Um, what that means is um, you have access to a very wide and diverse patient population. If you can imagine, you know, a practicing doctor in a, in a major city and all the challenges that you have from 24 hours uh, every day. Um, so I would imagine this is a, a very a more diverse patient population than other areas in the UK, you know, being in and around London. So you're being on rotation, you're going to be working in hospitals, community health centers, and emergency medicine wards, et cetera. If you are interested, we do have quite a nice um, clinical placement web page with an interactive map with all our confirmed hospital providers. So you can see here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but Brunel is the little orange waterboard, central London's to the right. Um, and all the numbers are, are our partner hospitals, which are listed on the left. Um, points of interest, you've got Wembley, for football fans and music fans, not far away. Heathrow Airport, I think is the blue um, flag here. Um, so yeah, some of Europe's leading hospitals are on this list. Uh, for example, the Royal Brompton in, in Chelsea, West London, is internationally renowned for its heart and lung centre. Okay, so we've been through quite a lot quite quickly, uh, you know, in the last 20, 30 minutes. So in summary, um, and then we can answer a lot of your questions. Um, the the MBBS degree for 2022-23 entry is for overseas international students only. Um, we are brand new. Uh, our first cohort is for next year. We have over 60 to 70 places available, which is deemed as high for a medical school. You can apply now, and we encourage you to apply early in the next few weeks. Um, there are scholarships, um, they're worth £30,000 each. The UCAT BMAT is not a requirement, um, but will be for next year. Oh, well, I haven't mentioned uh, student accommodation, so quickly, yeah. Um, if you're applying as an international student, you are guaranteed student accommodation on campus um, for the first year. Uh, and you, you can apply for student accommodation for years two, three, four and five. There are opportunities. Um, you know, but by, by years two, three, you may want to buddy up and, uh, and rent some local accommodation in, in the area, which is a popular um, thing that people do. Uh, guaranteed clinical placements, of course, um, and team-based learning is our main method of teaching. And just finally, I just want to mention the General Medical Council, because uh, some of you may have some questions around that. Um, so I, I want, it's important to know that we're working very closely and have been for a number of years now with the GMC. This is to quality assure the course. And this takes the form of a year by year review. Um, it's nothing unique. It's the same process for every other medical school that's opened its doors in the UK. And we'll receive full approval once our first cohort graduate. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna unshare my screen and then hopefully we can answer some questions. Chris, thank you so much for that great presentation. Uh, a lot we've gone through there. I've got some questions as well. And I know the students have got some questions and there's a couple of things which came up that I do want to kind of discuss with you as well, if that's okay, Chris. Yeah, yeah of course. So uh, I know early on you mentioned about uh, Singapore and obviously the Singaporean Medical Council has a very restrictive list indeed of, of programs. But my understanding is there's a different way to get registered in Singapore. And uh, basically Singapore has got the luxury of being able to accept specialists whenever they want. So if a student graduates from Brunel and then 
works in the UK, and that's going to lead into one of the other questions that we've got, uh, and they qualify with a postgraduate specialization after they've uh, qualified as a doctor, then they're going to find an easier pathway back to Singapore because once students have certain postgraduate qualifications, regardless of where they've done their primary medical qualification, they can then enter Singapore effectively as a registrar or consultant. And I think that's something which like a number of yeah. Singaporean destined students have actually gone through. They've just chosen not to go back to Singapore immediately, but to go to Singapore as a specialist, which obviously commands a significant salary in, in that particular country. Uh, so some of the questions that will go to students and I've got a few more I want to ask if we go to the Q&A first and there are some in the in the uh, chat feature as well someone said they've already submitted their application for the MBBS course at Brunel hopefully through Medical Doorway um, mm -hmm. uh, they've received an update the automatic update which comes out but how soon can they expect an answer if they've been shortlisted for interview or not so yeah good question um our first round of interviews will be in December. So certainly come November, um, we will be, in, uh, we'll be sending our invitations or unfortunately if anyone is successful, uh, re rejection letters as well. Um, now I would imagine, I can't be sure, but this will be in the first half of November. I wouldn't like to give a date. It certainly won't be this month because we're going through hundreds of applications, uh, but early, let's say early November. Um, and we'll, we'll certainly get back to you. Okay. A uh, couple of the quick ones. Will, Lena, I will come to yours in a second because the American qualifications, there's a big uh, kind of algorithm on the website that I've seen for American qualifications. But Shreya asked about English from, uh, from the IB and that was answered in the presentation as well. If you were taken English on as part of the International Baccalaureate and get a high enough score, then you would not require IELTS. And I think that's the case, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah, no problems there. And someone anonymous has asked about UCAS. As I said, it doesn't matter whether you apply through Medical Doorway directly or UCAS this year, UCAT is not a requirement for Brunel. But as Chris said during the presentation, for those that are online today thinking about applications for 2023 20, and then 2024 enrollment, UCAT will be a requirement from that particular, from that particular stage. I just want to add something to that. And this is again more general. If you're an international applicant and you're thinking about applying to medical schools in the UK, do your research about UCAT v BMAT because there are some universities which would want UCAT, there are some that want BMAT, and to confuse the situation a little bit more, there are some universities which have UCAT for domestic applicants and BMAT for international. So it's just, I would definitely say, outside of this particular Brunel focus presentation, do do your research very early on. So you're not preparing or putting applications in that you would miss or would just automatically get a rejection for. I think that's something Chris would definitely uh, uh, kind of back me up on, really. Yeah, yeah indeed. That's great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there was something else in that which has just escaped my mind, but it will come back to me. Uh, and then, sorry, I got a call coming through. But uh, one of the other questions there as well is American programs uh, for uh, students who are taking the American programs and the APs. So, Chris, I have looked at the website before because I do have applicants who've gone through the American system. Can you just give us an idea about what you're looking for from someone who's going through a US high school diploma and perhaps taking APs or SATs or, uh, SATs or ACTs, et cetera? Sure. You just give me one second. Because um, sometimes it's easier to explain it if I show you. They are, are quite complicated, so I'm just going to share yes, my screen are. here. You can see that, Ben? Uh, we can, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we take a combination. So you can have three APs on it on their own, 554, for example, minimum. That's, that's, that's a popular um, route that people take. You can also have the, in combination with the high school diploma and the AP. I, I was told, actually, I was speaking to an American school counselor only yesterday, and apparently SATs, are, aren't happening anymore in America. That was news mm. to me. So this is a little bit out of date and we'd have to uh, amend that. So you can ignore the, the SAT section, um, but you can also come in with a GPA 3.24 in the associate degrees as well. So that this um, document is on our website underneath the entry requirements. So it might be easier for you just to look at that yourself. But essentially yeah. that is the, uh, we, yeah, it's quite a wide range of calls we accept there. Okay, perfect. 
Perfect. Yeah, that the American curriculum doesn't always easily translate to applications for medical schools in the UK because obviously, uh, if you're applying to uh, medicine in the US, you're applying for a pre-med degree prior to applying to medicine as postgraduate. So do please take a look at this document and make sure you kind of digest it in full, really, before you put your application forward. Now, linked back to something I was mentioning before, Carolina has asked, are international students required to work for five years in the NHS after completing the degree? Well, I can tell you categorically, you're not required to work. They're not contractually stuck in the UK. We're not going to kidnap you and keep you in the UK, unless you want to remain in the UK. But I think from a personal experience of working in the NHS and working with medical students for many years, some of the clinical training you will get as a junior doctor in the NHS is second to none. And some of the experiences you will get uh, will definitely give you a, 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 an impressive foundation of both knowledge and practical skills, as well as experiential experiences, which will give you the chance of a, a very kind of bright international career. But uh, Chris, you're obviously working directly in a number of medical schools, so I'd definitely kind of delegate to you for your opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I should have mentioned this in the talk, actually. So as an international student, um, so you, you will complete the five years MBBS degree, wherever you are, it might be six years. Um, but then you are um, entitled to stay in the UK for a further two years to do your, we call it foundation training, or I think maybe Americans call it residency training, uh, or otherwise known here as FY1 and FY2. So two years foundation training. And this is essentially, you know, an extension of clinical placements in hospitals, nothing to do with the university. You'd have left, you'd have graduated from university. So you're now doing two years training. Um, you would do have the option, if you, if, so, if you so wish, to do this training in your home country. That's also a popular route. But most international students will apply to um, stay another two years. And your visa does permit this. That's quite new over the last couple of years, so, which is you know, good news for you. Um, and then, you know, after that, who knows? You know, that, then it is visa permitting after the two years. You would look at your specialisms. Um, and many overseas students will probably want to go back home to practice medicine and continue, no doubt, with their further training. Mm -hmm. There's one thing I want to kind of highlight, which perhaps a lot of international students have not necessarily considered, was Britain's, Britain's departure from the European Union has changed the dynamic for international students working in the UK dramatically, because prior to uh, Brexit, uh, any applicant who was from of the one of the European Economic Area member states was effectively had preferential access to the job market above anyone who was a non-EEA member. But if, I, if you're coming to the UK, as Chris said, and you qualify from the university here, you do get this post-study work visa. But considering the number of vacancies that we have for doctors in the NHS, especially after those two years of foundation training, I can kind of hand on heart say that there will be significant opportunities, not just in London, but across the United Kingdom, if you wish to take your career further as well in the NHS. So we're all, the, the NHS is always looking for uh, highly qualified doctors from overseas, in addition to doctors who've qualified from UK medical schools as well. So uh, there's a couple of things, Chris, I want to ask if that's okay, because there's something I think, which I think we need, definitely need to inform students about. One thing is the new relatively well it will be new by the time it comes the medical licensing assessment which is the new gmc medical licensing assessment which is due to i think start in 2024 so anyone yeah. who's starting uk medical schools or chooses to actually apply to work in the uk if they've trained internationally will have to take these assessments and obviously the medical schools in the uk have been brought along with the GMC and development of the MLA. Can you just talk a little bit more about what the plans are for Brunel for preparing students for the medical licensing assessment exams, which will take place, I believe, in the fifth year of their uh, education? Yeah, no, thanks, Ben. Um, so yeah, you're quite right. So this is a, a new sort of regulation that's come in um, that's you know asked of all our students uh, in the UK to study medicine to, to pass the, um, the <coughs> MLA. Um, so this, this, I believe, is from 2024 yes. onwards. Um, so I think you've been there, right. I think it's probably in year three, that would be. Yeah. Year two or three. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you, you students will need to pass this, um, whether you're UK or, home, or mm. overseas, I believe, in order to practice um, medicine. Um, so it's really important, obviously. Um, so here at Brunel, um, we have embedded and integrated into, into the curriculum you know, guidance um, and preparation materials for 
the MLA because it's obviously very important um, for your um, progression as, as a doctor. So yeah, we'll prepare you fully for these um, exams. And again, you know, I don't mind speaking broadly, that's something you want to be asking all the medical schools you're applying to. It's a really important point. Um, you know, you can just ask them, what preparation will I have for the, for the MLAs? Um, you might actually catch them off guard. They may not know, but it's something that they need to know. Um, mm. So yeah, just bear that in mind. I think it would be a very good thing for students to actually, and this is probably some advice for the students who are online now, to actually ask that question when they have an interview, because it will actually demonstrate that you've gone that extra mile and done some research into the kind of regulatory and legal frameworks that surround the medical profession in the UK. Uh, so that will definitely be something which demonstrates your ability to actually perhaps think outside of the box and think in the, you know, a few steps ahead in terms of your journey through medical school. And perhaps we'll make you stand out at those interviews, whether it's for Brunel or at the medical school as well. Okay. Uh, Shreya, you've asked about how important is it to meet the subject specific and I'm assuming grade requirements. If you meet the overall point requirement for the IB, and a one point short, say, in one subject, would that result in an automatic rejection when results are they published, say, in the 5th of July when the IB results are? Just to preempt something that Chris might say and I'll hand over. Every application is treated as an individual application right from the minute the application is made to your interview to when your results are issued. If you haven't met the terms of your conditional offer, then obviously an offer is not guaranteed to become unconditional but obviously the university do look at all of their applicants when result applications when results are out as chris is there anything you want to add to that so yeah i mean it's it's a tricky one it, mm. i'll be honest it's all about demand you know if we've got thousands of applications everyone meets the entry criteria then you know for those who don't meet the entry criteria even just by one point you know it'll, it'll look unlikely however you know it doesn't hurt applying anyway if you think you're going to be a bit short because you never know. Uh, you may well be put on a waiting list at a university and, you know, come, you know, March, April next year, you know, universities may go back to that waiting list and think, actually, you know, quite a good candidate, Mr. Grade, but OK, in, you know, interviewed well. Um, so, yeah, I would probably I'd encourage you to, uh, to still apply. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's one more question which we'll get to in a moment, but I do want to give students some kind of general information. Last year, uh, there was a 21% increase in applications to UK medical schools on UCAS when the data came out. Uh, data comes out around about the end of first week of November. That's where we see the data from the 15th of October deadline. Uh, so anecdotally, I can say that the increase in applications this year is going to, you know, I think make last year look look uh, small in comparison because we've got the situation that happened in the UK. So as an international student, you know, with the pressure on numbers in UK medical schools to cater to our domestic students, I think you're going to find it it's significantly more competitive even than last year. And last year, international applications are up 55% when you add Brexit into that mix as well. So this opportunity at Brunel is certainly something which I think we need you need to focus on. And if you haven't applied kind of already, we should definitely get the application done now to get you first into the uh, series of interviews in December, should your application be deemed worthy of uh, having you shortlisted for interview. And in a moment, I'm going to show you how to do the application very quickly with Medical Doorway. So straight after this presentation, you can go ahead and do that, and then we can get the application fully submitted to uh, Brunel ASAP. Uh, but AP programme, Lena, uh, if, I've, if I have my AP American programme, should I also go through IELTS? Now, I want to say, no, you don't need to, but I'm not 100% mm. sure. As, as a disclaimer, so I'm not from admissions, although I do yeah. have general knowledge. Um, so what I'll do, I sh I'll, there's one thing I didn't, if I'm just going to share my screen again. Yep. Um, so this, take note of the our admissions um, email address, medicine.admissions at brunel.ac.uk. If you have any question, further questions, um, on admissions related um, subjects. Um, for example, yeah, if, if you wouldn't mind, please um, emailing them today, they'll, they'll get back to you, no doubt, within a few hours um, of, with that question. Um, and you can say you've spoken to me, um, that, that would be great. Yeah, I think it also does depend on your passport as well, because if you're a national, if you're a national or you've been educated in an English language speaking country, like say look, if you've been at school in the UK or school in, Can in the English part speaking, speaking, speaking parts of Canada, then often you are, there is an exemption op option for you to have uh, IELTS, et cetera, as well. So again, each application is dealt with on its individual 
profile. If, for example, there's any doubt about your eligibility, you're not just going to be automatically rejected. You will be contacted, or I would be contacted if you've applied through Medical Doorway, and I can often deal with most queries before having to come back to you. But then we will actually be able then to give you an accurate answer. You're not automatically going to be rejected. If there is a query about your English language qualification, you will be contacted to see if you've got evidence that you then meet those criteria or would have evidence to meet those criteria, such as an IELTS or booking etc okay uh will the university look at the predicted grades for approval i think the short answer really is yes <laughs> they're not going to put you through the interview if you're not uh if your predicted grades don't match the requirement from the university listen there are thousands of applications for medicine applicants uh, for medical seats in the uk if if brunel has say 60 to 70 i can guarantee you as of today there are 10 applicants per place for those for each, per place for those uh for those seats they're not gonna no one's gonna raise your or kind of expectations if your predicted grades are not meeting what the requirement is as well okay uh Someone has asked, do you take a look at extracurricular too, job shadowing, et cetera? And I've got a really good answer for that. But before I give mine, I'm going to ask Chris to come in on that one. So, yeah, it's, it's all a bit, up. I wouldn't, don't want to say up in the air, but due to the pandemic, it's not as structured as it normally is. So normally we would ask for, you know, solid work experience in the hospital or GP surgery or a health centre or something like that, you know, on top of all your usual out, outdoor activities, music, sport, etc. But I think universities are taking a lot of different approach this year due to the pandemic. But what you can do in your personal statement um, is add anything that you think might be useful, you know, as an example, there are now, uh, I don't know where they are, but they, I've heard there are virtual, you know, shadowing um, opportunities for you to look at in hospitals and, and even in, in surgeries. So have a little look about at that. And if you do get time, you know, you can mention it in your application form in the personal statement that, you know, in your home country, I haven't been able to go out and do what I've wanted to do. But if I, if I could, I'll do this. And then perhaps, you know, in preparation for your interview, because, you know, work experience may or could, could come up in an interview or you can talk about, you know, what you enjoyed or what you, you're looking forward to doing. You know, you've got a little bit of time now as the pandemic is, well, we're touch wood coming out of the pandemic slowly. You've got time to do organise maybe something before December and um, to have a little think about that as well. Yeah. The one thing I want to say, which is kind of, I had this conversation yesterday with a student who I was doing, uh, doing a, uh, a consultation with, was... It's not about your volume of experience. Someone could have had 500 hours of clinical experience in hospitals in various departments, but not learned anything from that time. You may have had a very short period, but then in the interview, it comes across that you've reflected on your experience and then you've learned why medicine is the right career for you. You know, when you go into a hospital, it's not... It, Medicine is not a glamorous profession. I do have to tell you that now. There are various aspects that make medicine undesirable as a, as a career pathway. So if you've had that experience in a hospital and you've seen perhaps negative experiences, how has that reinforced that medicine is the right career for you? And where does that come from the clinical experience and the evidence that you have? Uh, so yeah, when, when anyone, I was interviewing students, it was, you know, people were reaming off their hours and hours and hours of experience. My, my ultimate question at the end was, so what? What has that given you to tell me that you're the right fit for medicine and why I should accept you as a medical student compared to the other nine or 19 people that are applying for that one particular seat? So take the experience, but what have you learned from it? And that's the take home message I would say from that. What would you say to that, Chris? Yeah, no, to totally mm -hmm. agree. And that, um, you know, and I guess and on top of that, you know, experience isn't for us it's not a box ticking exercise it's, exactly. it's for you so you know you may go out into the hospital next week and do some experience and not even like it you like, oh i don't mm. like being in this board this environment um you know so it's it's essentially for you and then for you to talk about your experiences you know on your application form or at interview okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you quickly if you haven't applied yet, and then we're going to go back into the Q&A because there's a, there's a little bit more time for questions before we let Chris go in five minutes. But it's very easy to apply to Brunel, completely free of charge with Medical Doorway. So I'm just going to share my screen now. So you should see the Medical Doorway website, medicaldoorway.com. Now, there are different ways to apply using this website. 
the kind of easiest way is on the far left of the screen, you can see apply now here, or you can negotiate navigate to Brunel University at the top of the UK section here. But if we click on apply now, and you will see Brunel there, then this form will come up here. And all you need to do is fill this form in. Now, some of these things are optional. So if you're not a graduate, you don't have to complete this section here. And then you can upload your ID because we do need that for the application. Any educational qualifications you've got, if you've taken an IELTS, et cetera, that here and a personal statement. The one thing we will also need as well is a referee, but we often will email that to you uh, after we've uh, assessed your application because we don't want you sharing other people's personal data if we know your application is not going to be uh, successful. And we will contact you if we don't believe your application will be shortlisted. But this form will take you no more than 10 minutes to fill in. It's very simple to fill in and you need to upload some very basic documents. And that gives us the foundation by which we can start your application. And as and when we need more information, we will then contact you directly to get that information as well. That then goes straight onto the Brunel system. So as I said, this is not part of UCAS. You can effectively apply to this program free of charge directly with Medical Doorway. And it also means that if you've got a question about your application, you don't have to constantly email the staff at the university and wait for a response because they are extremely busy with the volume of applications. You can come directly to Medical Doorway, you can book a Zoom consultation with us, you can give us a call or drop us an email and have our full free support to help you uh, make that application to Brunel. So you can find the website there, or the application form there I should say, or click on Brunel and all the information is here as well. OK, so that's a very easy uh, method to apply. The information's here. And again, another link to the application form is available on the university's page on the Medical Doorway website. So uh, there's another question just coming, Chris, before we let go. So what I would say is we're going to keep Chris for another two or three minutes. So you do have questions. Please do ask them now. Or if you don't get the chance to ask them now, you can always email me directly after this presentation. Oh, the question is just saying thank you. So that's quite nice, oh. actually. Nice way to kind of... Uh, and appreciate it. So uh, with that, unless there are any final questions that come in in the next two minutes, I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone that's joined us today on Zoom. We have had people joining us, as I've seen, on, on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Uh, uh, this is going to be, this is being recorded and will go live on the YouTube channel with slight edit later on today. So please do, if you want to take a look at that again, then do... Uh, Kind of take a look at the recording and the, the edited one will have timestamps in it so you don't have to listen to what was drawn on for a full hour in the, in the process if you want to get to something very specific uh, in the presentation that we talked about today. This is a great opportunity guys and for international students it's perhaps not going to be an opportunity that's going to be there in this volume forever because the UK needs more doctors and the UK government has promised to put more funding so a number of these seats in the future are likely to go be commissioned from the government and be there for UK students so I think this is a great opportunity as the first enrolment the university is going to make sure you do get the best educational and you know pastoral experience you could possibly want in any university uh, in the UK or actually the world. And it's a great location, as I said, very close to Heathrow. So you can land from Hong Kong or Singapore or Dubai or Perth <laughs> in Australia direct now. And within 15 minutes or so after you've left the airport, half an hour, you can be in your home, in your accommodation, ready to go. So you don't have to trips across the country after you land at Heathrow. So that is uh, one of the added conveniences as travel is opening up a lot more than perhaps it's been over the last 12, 24 months. So there are no more questions. There don't seem to be any more questions in the Q&A feature on any more questions. Oh, OK. Are there any needs based financial aid? Someone's just asked So there's a scholarship system, which Chris did talk about, which is worth up to £30,000, like £6,000 a year fee discount. And there's an application procedure to go through once you've got your offer. Uh, but it's not based on need. It's based on your presentation and the the. Uh, your, your the kind of competition to get the scholarship. How many scholarships are available, Chris? I don't know if we've discussed uh, There's five uh, next year. Five scholarships out of a total of up to 70 seats, so not many. So if that's something that you're definitely going, going to need, you're going to be in a competition for that. My advice is, if you definitely need the scholarship to afford the fees 100%, it may not be the best opportunity to kind of hang your hopes on getting that for those five. Don't, by any means, I don't want to dissuade you, but only five scholarships available for the 70 applicants. I would say apply if you know you can meet the tuition fees and the living costs. And I think we're estimating living costs around about 10 to 15,000 pounds a year, Chris. Would you say that's probably a good estimate? 
Yeah, I know the international team, they say, you know, you want a budget between 700, 800 pounds a month. Mm. Um, you know, that includes your accommodation, your living costs, your, your, your fun and games in London, etc. Yeah, yeah. And London... You can spend a certain amount more than that as well, if uh, if if well. But the good news is because you're in a campus location, you're not having to use the underground all the time to get from uh, one place to the other, which is a an advantage which can keep costs down. Okay, it's just gone at twelve o'clock. Uh, everyone, I want to say thank you so much to Chris Holloway and the team at Brunel University. I will be visiting the medical school over the next uh, few months, perhaps in the new year, and take some more videos and etc. to share the experiences that I've had at the university with you and session of the facilities, etc. So do keep an eye on, on that. So subscribe to the YouTube channel because it does mean that you'll get updates about the different videos and webinars that we do. And I want to wish everyone a, a good evening or uh, afternoon if they're coming into the afternoon now or uh, uh, good end of the morning to you if you're coming from the from the states etc thanks to chris uh and all the college counselors that have you know advised students about this and if you need anything at all get in contact with medical doorway and we'll be delighted to help you take care and bye now